I will show you how to create rocks you can mine and then add them to your tile map scene collection for easy use in any scene. We will also cover hit and hurt components to apply damage when using the axe tool and create reusable collectible components to gather the stones. So before we create the rock scene, let's create a new test scene. So scenes, test scene, and then make a copy of the objects and trees scene. Just duplicate that and we'll then call it objects rocks and then just click duplicate. Let's open the scene and then F2 on here and we'll call it objects rocks. I'll just save that scene. Let's go back to the test scene objects trees. Just rename that and just save. Okay, let's close the test scene objects trees and just keep this one open and we'll just remove this layer here. So just right click and then delete the layer. So we've now got a test scene ready for trying and testing our rock scenes out. So just click save all scenes. So let's just go to the trees folder and then let's just load the small tree scene. So we're going to create a rock scene which is going to be very similar to this as we've made these reusable components. So please check out my previous tutorial on how to create the trees and how to chop the trees. Let's go to scene, new scene other node and then search for sprite 2d then f2 and name this to rock in the objects folder let's create a new folder and we'll call this rocks and then let's save our scene and we'll just save that into our objects folder under rocks so save with the rock scene selected in the texture property let's create a new atlas texture and then open that and in the atlas property Go to the assets folder and in game and objects, let's drag over the basic grass and biome things. Let's just scroll in and what we want is this rock here and this will be the stone which is generated once the rock is mined. So let's go to edit region and with grid snap selected, let's just draw a grid around this rock and click close. And as you can see now, we have our rock here. So let's just move this a little bit up. Then on rock, add a new child node and search for a static body 2D. And then add another child node and search for a collision shape 2D. For the shape, let's then pick the circle shape and then reduce the size. Then click on static body 2D and just check that the collision layer is on one for ground and the mask is also on one for ground. Now let's go to our components folder under scenes and then drag the hurt component onto the rock and the tool which the hurt component receives will also be the axe. Then add another collision shape. So search for collision shape 2D and then create that collision shape. But for this shape, we'll just change the color and make that a bit different. And for the shape, let's add a circle shape. So let's just make this a little bit larger so the first collision shape is to stop the player from walking through the rock and then the second collision shape is to receive the axe input so I'll just click the hurt component one more time and then on the collision layer we've already got the correct value set so five is object and the mask is the tool and this is because we have created it as a component with those values automatically set. So this saves us time and makes it a little bit more reusable. So the next thing is let's take another custom component and we want to use the damage component and drag that onto the rock. Then we will set the maximum damage to five. This means that the ax will need to hit the rock five times before it will start to mine and create the stones. The final step will be to add a script to the rock itself. So I'll attach the script and we'll save this rock script in objects and rocks and just create that file. And we can actually just copy the code from small tree. So let's just highlight all of the code from the small tree script, go to the rock script and then just copy and paste that. However, in the unhurt, we will take off the shake intensity and the timeout. Then in the on max damage reach, we need to just modify these variables here. So we'll take this print statement off as well. And instead of log scene, we will add a stone scene. 
and then let's just change this to be stone and here it will be rock so we can see that this stone scene doesn't exist so let's now create that scene let's go to scene new scene other node and search for sprite 2d and then let's name this as stone and then save the scene in our scenes objects and rocks folder let's save that scene and in the texture property let's just create a new atlas texture and then open that resource and in the atlas property let's go to the objects folder in assets and game and just drag over the basic grass and biome things asset and just drop that into there then click edit region and with grid snap selected let's just zoom in and choose our stone now there's an alternative way to select assets because this one is slightly off centered so you can actually choose auto slice and as you can see the stone has been auto sliced and you can just select it so that it turns white once that's selected click close and then go to the 2d view and as you can see we've now got our stone here and when the player mines the rock the stones will be created from the rock so we need to make this stone collectible in the previous tutorial when we created our trees i showed you how to create the collectible component so go into components here and then choose collectible components and just drop this on to your stone scene now we can then attach a collision shape in the shape property let's change this to be a circle shape and we'll just reduce the size so that it fits around the sprite and then let's just change the color to be green then click on the collectible component and for collectible name just add the string stone and if we just view the collision layer we've already predefined this from inside of the collectible component scene so just close that and the reason why we are adding stone to the collectible name is because in a future tutorial i'm going to show you how to collect objects such as the stones and the logs and then add them into your inventory so by reusing this collectible component and then giving each collectible a different collectible name this will enable us to create efficient code and reusability so that later the inventory panel will be easier to create and then any objects that you wish to be collectibles will be much faster to create for your game and will be all consistent too now head back over to the rock scene and then just go into the rock script and we can see now that the log scene has been resolved here but what we just need to do is update this to be stone scene then let's just modify our code here so that it's consistent with the stone so now we use stone instance and we still set the global position and that's the same and then put stone instance to add that as a child so now let's go back to test scene objects and rocks let's create a new layer here so say add child node and then search for tile map layer press f2 to rename the layer to rocks go to 2d and then on the rocks tile map layer with the tile set let's just use quick load and then load the game tile set and in tile set menu here let's just click scene collection and let's add our rock scene so go scene objects rocks and choose rock scene and this should add it here into our collection then head over to tile map and then choose the rock object here and let's just paint a couple of rocks and now we are ready to test the scene so let's just go back to test scene objects and rocks and then let's run the current scene and then we'll say one two three four and five and then that produces the stone and we can then collect that stone we can do this one more time two three four and five and then collect that stone so now we can close the window in a previous tutorial in the series i've shown how to create a shaking effect using a shader i'm going to use the same effect on this rock but change some of the parameters so first let's go to the shader and this is in our trees folder let's just rename this shader and just call it shake 
Then let's just move the shader. So I'll click move and duplicate to, and then just move it into the objects folder because we'll share it between the rocks and the trees. So just move that. Then just turn off the two collision shapes so that we can see the rock and then scroll down to material and let's create a new shader material and drag the shader into the shader property. Then in our shake intensity, let's just increase this to 0.3. And as the ax hits the rock, we'll just shake the rock slightly. So let's just reset that back to zero and then just unhide the collision shapes. Now that we've applied the shader, we just need to remodify our on her component to go back to small tree. And in the script, let's just copy and paste the code that's in the on her method. So copy that, go back to rock, and then just paste that information in. But for the shake intensity, let's reduce this to 0.3. And for the timeout, let's just reduce this to 0.5. Let's head back over to our test scene and then run our test scene. And when we hit the rock, you can see that the rocks are all shaking. So let's just make a couple more modifications. Let's stop the scene, go back to the rock and then scroll back down to the material and inside the shader. Let's just for the resource, switch on local to scene and then head back to test scene objects and rocks and then just test the scene again. So we go one, two, three, four, and five, and then close that. Now that brings us to the end of this tutorial on how to create rocks for the game, which can be mined and produce stones. We have reused some of the components which we have created in previous tutorials in this series. If you like what you've seen in this tutorial, please remember to hit like and subscribe to receive notifications of future tutorials. Thank you for watching.